This is a very big deal. And what this really tells me is that traders see some of the writing on the wall and they are buying gold and overwhelming the Fed's ability to keep that price suppressed. Join Lynette Zhang as she demystifies the art of wealth preservation in today's financial landscape. This video isn't just informative, it's a blueprint for using physical gold and silver as anchors in securing your prosperity amid market volatility. Discover why these timeless assets are indispensable for fortifying your financial stronghold against the uncertainties of the modern economy. You would have loaded up on that in no time if you understood what was happening today. So it's critically important for you to have a plan and a strategy because I'm going to show you their plan and their strategy right now. So let's get, let's get, just get started. The rising financialization of the U S economy. What does that mean? That means that it, that financialization is where wall street becomes more important than main street. And it is critically important. And the financial crisis in 2008, seven, eight, nine should have shown you who the government and the central banks think is the most important because you and I did not get bailed out. It was wall street and the banking system that got bailed out. And what happened in the most recent crisis, right? Who really got bailed out? It was not you or me. We've been having to deal with the aftermath of the inflation that they utilize to make things, to paper over things and make things look okay. While in reality, what they're really doing and what these financial products really do is transfer that risk from the few, from the 1%, from the powers that be to the many, to the public. And we are the ones that always pay. Let me show you what I mean. And I've talked about this in previous videos as well. This is the financial services sector controls a widening swath of the U S economy. And here it is. This is going back to 1940, where it was a little bit more than 10%. Well, now it's closer to 25% or at least in 2020, it would be higher than that today, three years later. And that 25% actually controls much more of the GDP in the global economy. U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis data show that financial sector profits and their share of GDP have skyrocketed, skyrocketed since the 1970s. What happened in the 1970s? Our government handed over full control of inflation to a private bank, the Federal Reserve. Well, who benefits? Because since then, everything, everything, everything has been turned into a financial product because it is so critically important that the banks make their profit, not how you and I are in the prices that you and I pay, but the banks make their profit. And so they created derivatives. Now look, derivatives, speculative derivatives, derivatives have been around for a long time. If I were a farmer and I'm planting my crops in the spring and I'm not going to be able to harvest them until the fall, I have no idea what the weather conditions are going to be, what the water conditions are going to be. If I'm going to recoup my costs from planting this crop and all the costs associated with it, if I'm going to make a profit, am I going to be able to stay around? So a derivative for a farmer insures, it's an insurance contract, right? He can buy or she can buy a derivative contract that ensures that their corn or their soy or whatever they're growing, that they at least break even so they can live for another day. If they don't need it, okay, it goes away. It's just the cost of insurance. But if they do need it, it can save their lives. And we can see that this is, this is 50% right there. That red line, that's 50%. So banks actually this past quarter generated over 51.7% of their profits from trading these speculative derivatives. 
And it's taken more and more speculation to generate these products. I mean, these profits. And so what is that really telling you? That there is a lot more risk in the banking system. And since 2013, they created these different products to consolidate the trades. And so every single entity, whether it's the FDIC, the Federal Reserve, the Bank for International Settlements, any of them, admit openly that no one, no one, no one really knows the true value at risk. When you're looking at these charts and graphs, all you're really seeing is the market, the current market valuation of these contracts, which are all counterparty risk. What financial asset does not run counterparty risk? According to the Bank for International Settlements, gold is the only financial asset, not one of two or three or four or five, the only financial asset that does not run counterparty risk. Deeper pockets, deeper wells. That's what's basically going on here. Whoever is doing this doesn't give a damn about the small people. Well, it's traders. They don't give a damn about that. They only care about profits. Last year, almost 1,500 domestic wells went dry statewide and the state auditor reported almost a million Californians had no safe drinking water in their homes. Today, the people of Woodville drink bottled water. Hmm. So whatever you have pumped to your home is going to cost you more. And now you have to go out and buy water. Now I know a lot of people do buy water that creates some other things as well. But my point here is everything has been turned into a financial product and it's all controlled by traders. So that creates a problem for the central banks that are raising or or lowering rates in an attempt to control inflation because what they're really depending upon is a true supply and demand market. But what they're really playing with is Wall Street and that derivatives market. This is a very big deal. And what this really tells me is that traders see some of the writing on the wall and they are buying gold and overwhelming the Fed's ability to keep that price suppressed. Which camp do you wanna be in? You have to decide for yourself. Do you want the traders to control your wealth? And, and they're all overvalued because of that, because it really doesn't matter. And this era of cheap money is over, at least for now. Or do you want to control it? This puts you at the driver's seat. Why do you think they had to take gold out of the money system to begin with? Because when we were on a gold standard, if you did not like what the governments were doing, you simply walked into the bank with, well, a $20 bill. I've got one, but you walked in for a $20 bill and you walked out with an ounce of gold. Well, that created restrictions around what the government could do. They did not like it. Plus corporations wanted to pay you less and less. Well, on a gold standard, that really didn't happen. I'm not saying there wasn't an ebb and flow, but it was simply an ebb and flow. So they had to convert us to the fiat money system, which is just, you know, their ability to print all that garbage, right? And control the value of what they were printing and take gold out of the system. So governments had no limitations on the level of debt that they could grow, which certainly we're at a peak. It's a big concern, but also the ability of corporations to pay you less and less because nominally it looks like you're making more. But in reality, because inflation has robbed you of your purchasing power, there is actually less and less value in these things. In fact, officially three cents. As we conclude this insightful journey into the realm of financial resilience, Lynette Zhang's revelations highlight the indispensable role of physical gold and silver in securing wealth amidst market fluctuations. 
Remember, in today's ever-changing financial landscape, these timeless assets serve as steadfast guardians of prosperity. Armed with this knowledge, fortify your financial future and stay tuned by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel for more empowering insights to navigate the complexities of our economic world. Thank you.